Hey guys, Doc here. Today we're going to go over candlestick basics and candlestick patterns. Instead of just showing the candlestick patterns and what to look for, I'm going to explain why they are bullish or bearish from the viewpoint of the trader. Basically what's happening with price action that makes that particular uh, candle pattern bullish or bearish, right? You know, there's a lot of uh, information out there that'll show you, hey, this is what you look for. You look for a red candle and a green candle and a green candle, and that's such and such pattern. But it doesn't let you know why, right? What's going on with that price action that lets you know why? And I think that's important to understand why, because if you understand the price action based on candle formations, then you can almost kind of ignore these patterns because you're going to recognize price action based on those candle formations. So even if you have a particular candle formation that's not exactly like a particular formation that's known to be a bullish pattern, if it's similar to it, you can still uh, ascertain that it's basically a bullish pattern. And that's why I think that's important. So instead of just throwing out there candlestick patterns and uh, whether they're bullish or bearish, I'm going to explain again why they're bullish or bearish so that we understand that price action. I think it'll be, it'll be very helpful. A couple things to keep in mind with uh, candlestick patterns is these are going to work on any time frame, right? From the one minute, five minute, 15 minute, daily, weekly, whatever time frame you're working on or you're looking at, uh, these uh, patterns are going to be uh, effective, right? So if you see a bullish candlestick pattern on the one minute, does that mean that we're going to look for a swing trade there? Well, no, right? Because uh, we're looking at the one minute chart. That's a you know very, very dialed in microscopic uh, picture of what's going on. Uh, but if you're looking at the daily chart and you see a good uh, setup, a good candle pattern setup, then absolutely, you might want to take a look at that, you know, among other uh, indications for a possible swing trade idea. So basically, each candle is going to represent price action over a specified period of time that's going to correspond with the chart time frame that you're looking at, right? So uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say that this particular green candle here is a, that we're looking at this on a daily chart, okay? So basically what we have here is on the day when, when, when the trade, trading began and the market opened, this was our open price, right? So during that day, this was the low that it reached of the day, right? This was a high that it reached of the day here. And then it ended up closing here, okay? So that's on your, your green candle. So opened here, low of the day here, high of the day here, ended up closing here, right? Okay, a little bit opposite with a red candle. Let's, let's again assume that we're looking at a daily chart. So this, this entire candle represents a, a full day of trading. So we opened here, okay? So a little bit different than the green candle. The green candle we opened down here, but on the red candle we opened here. We saw a high of the day, here and we saw a low of the day here and we closed here so hope that makes sense but this is going to be the same thing if you're looking at a one minute candle or a five minute candle so let's say you look at a five minute candle so this entire candle here represents five minutes of time okay during that five minutes of time this is where it opened low was here high was here and close after five minutes had surpassed is there. So those candles are going to correspond, like I said, with whatever time frame you're looking at. If you're looking at a one minute chart, this candle is going to represent one minute. If you're looking at a 15 minute chart, this candle is going to represent 15 minutes. Daily chart, going to represent a whole day of trading. So just wanted to get those candle basics out of the way to make sure that everybody was comfortable with uh, what we're looking at when we're looking at candles and wicks, candle bodies and wicks. So obviously from here, get my little drawing tool, from here to here is our top wick, from here to here is our bottom wick, and from here to here is our body, right? Same thing here, body, bottom wick, top wick, okay? And wicks are very important. We're going to go over that a little bit here in this session. Okay, let's move on. Move on to our first candle. 
So we're going to be looking at a doji. So what is a doji? So basically that's what a doji is going to look like. It's going to basically look like a like a you're pregnant sign, <laughs> like a plus sign, right? Uh, and by itself, a doji is a neutral candle. Basically what it means is, is that buyers and sellers really are kind of battling it out a little bit and there's no sense of direction at this point, right? So, you know, price came down to here and got bought up to here, right? Price went up to here and got sold down back down to here. So basically you have an open and close on this doji candle around the same area. Price got pushed down, got bought up. Price got pushed up, got sold down, okay? So basically buyers and sellers are are battling here and nobody really won. So what this can indicate is, is that basically uh, you could look for a possible reversal here, okay? Uh, depending on what's going on, depending on where you find these dojis. Uh, but in of itself, by itself, a doji is a neutral candle. We'll get into here in a few minutes uh, when you'll find that they may be bullish or bearish when they're coupled with other candles, creating a candlestick pattern. Okay, next thing we're going to take a look at is... I can get this to work here is the butterfly doji okay so this is actually a bullish doji right so uh, a bullish doji basically is where you have your price and your your open and your close are very similar in a very small area right they're almost the same but price got pushed way down right and what happened when price got pushed down it got bought right back up right so when price gets pushed down and gets a rejection down here, what does that mean? Well, that means that buyers came in down at this level and pushed the price back up. So there was a lot of demand down in this level. So uh, the market didn't like the fact that price was this low, pushed it back up. And so therefore, we end up having a very bullish type doji candle here. Okay, let's move on to the next one. The next one we're going to look at is... A gravestone doji so it's basically the opposite of a butterfly doji right and there's some other names for these some people call the butterfly doji. they call it a dragonfly doji basically that's what I'm trying to get away from I'm trying to get away from these names and trying to get you guys to understand what the actual candle looks like and what it means okay because the name really is irrelevant okay basically what we, we want to understand what's going on with this price action so pretty much the opposite here of the butterfly doji. What happened here was is we had an open and close very similar to one another, right? It basically opened and closed. This candle opened and closed right around the same price. And what happened was is buyers tried to push this price up, right? And it got rejected up here at this level. Sellers came in at this level. So this was a uh, an area of resistance where sellers came in and pushed the price back down. OK, so that's what makes this particular candle a bearish candle. So we talked about on the butterfly doji why it was bullish. Well, because price action got pushed down, but immediately got bought back up in the exact opposite here. So why is a gravestone doji bearish? Well, because price action buyers bought it up and it got rejected and sellers pushed it right back down almost to where it opened at or maybe even right at where it opened or maybe in a little bit below where it opened right okay so let's move on to the next one here next one we're going to take a look at is a pattern and the hammer is basically you're looking for uh, first of all you're looking for this to take place the hammer count to take place at the at the bottom of a downtrend Right? Or you're looking for that candle to form during a downtrend. And you want the bottom wick, let me get my drawing tool here, you want this bottom wick to be at least twice as long as the body, which we do have here. Definitely a much longer wick than the body, definitely twice as long as the body. We don't want to see a lot of top wick here. It's okay if you see a little bit of top wick, but we don't want to see a whole lot of top wick on these hammer candles. And again, these hammer candles, you're looking for them at, the, at on downtrends, okay? And <clears throat> the candle can be green or red, but 
the uh, if it's green, then it's a much stronger indication that you might see a reversal in direction, a price action. Price action. So why is a ha uh, hammer candle bullish? So the hammer candle basically shows that even though selling pressure pushed a price down here, right? This is where buyers came in. This is a demand level where buyers came in and said, hey, this price is too low push the price back on up to here, okay? So basically after this downtrend that's going on here, we can look for a possible reversal because now we're seeing buyers coming in heavily, right? And pushing this price action back up. So therefore we can possibly look for uh, a continued uh, direction on the upside after this buy up. Because at this point, sellers may have lost control and buyers may be regaining control here. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to go on to the next candle here. A lot of these candles, uh, these candle formations, candle patterns, they're going to have a, a nemesis, <laughs> which basically is uh, the opposite of what's going on with, uh, with that particular bullish candle. You're going to have a bearish uh, side to it as well. And that's what we're going to look at now. Let's see, get rid of that. Okay, so the next one we're going to take a look at is a hanging man, all right? A hanging man is basically the opposite of a hammer candle. So it's going to look the same, right? You're going to have the same type of candle. It still looks like a hammer candle, right? But a hammer candle you're going to find, again, at the bottom or on a downtrend. And a hanging man candle you're going to find on an uptrend, right? So... Uh, Hammer candle, you're looking at on a downtrend, and you're looking for the same kind of candle. It's going to basically be a hammer candle, right, on an uptrend. But we call it, on an uptrend, it's called a hanging man candle. You can look at it either way. Call it a hammer candle if you want. Uh, but if you see a hammer candle on an uptrend, then it is actually a bearish pattern, right? So what's going on with this hanging man candle? So looking for it, again, at the top of an uptrend. And why is this bearish? So basically it shows that sellers uh, came in and tried to push the price down, right? It did get rejected and got pushed back up. But this is where the first time we've seen after this uptrend here, the first time that we've seen a lot of sellers come in, right? So because these sellers are now stepping in, we might take a look and see if we may have sellers might be getting ready to take Take, and take over control from the buyers. Okay, so hope that makes sense. We're going to move on to our next one. Okay, next one is the inverted hammer. This is another bullish pattern, okay? That's a one candle pattern. And basically what we're looking for here is we're looking for a hammer that is just upside down. Hammer candle that's upside down on a downtrend, okay? So <clears throat> an inverted hammer is basically an upside down hammer with the top wick, again, being at least twice as long as your body, right? And we want a small to no bottom wick. It's okay to have a little bit of bottom wick, but you don't want a big bottom wick. And just like a hammer, we're looking for these during a downtrend, okay? Uh, why is this bullish? Why is this a bullish pattern? What's going on with price action here? Well, again, you have uh, buyers came in. So basically, we're on a downtrend here, right? So we're looking for buyers. So you have buyers that came in that pushed this price back up here, pushed it all the way back up to here, right? But it did get rejected. But the key point to remember is buyers came in, right? We didn't see many buyers coming in here. Here we saw buyers coming in. So we're already thinking that down here, buyers are looking at this as a good entry area or a point of accumulation where they might, they might think that this is a good opportunity to hop into the stock, right? To hop in at that price. So even though, the, even though they got rejected up here, that's okay. 
because buyers are still trying to push this price up. So because of that, we can look for buyers continuing to come in to possibly push this price on up. So that's why the inverted hammer is a bullish pattern. Okay, we're gonna look at the next one here. Shooting star. So shooting star is the opposite of a of an inverted hammer, right? So you have an inverted hammer up here, same exact topic candle that we looked at on the previous one. So you have an inverted uh, an inverted hammer here, but the difference is is that this particular inverted inverted hammer is at an uptrend, is on an uptrend. So we're trending up here, and we have an inverted hammer. So what's going on here? What's going on is is that buyers are still trying. You know, you had a lot of buyers here, a lot of buyers here, and you had a lot of buyers here again. But what's the difference? The difference here is that sellers came in and were able to push the price back down where uh, to where the uh, candle actually closed, right? So we have sellers coming in up here. You're going to see this candle is going to be fairly common when you reach a new pivot high or when you reach a new high of the day. This is a very common candle that you'll see. And this can uh, uh, certainly signify that there are now sellers coming into this particular stock. They're thinking that it's too high. They want to sell their position. They want to take a short position, whatever the case may be, but they are pushing price action back down. So we can look for sellers to be taking over at that point. So just because you see a hammer candle, or just because you see an inverted hammer candle, doesn't necessarily mean that it's bullish or bearish. It depends on where it is, right? So if we see an inverted hammer on a downtrend, it's bullish. If we see it on an uptrend, it's a bearish. Same thing with a hammer. If we see a hammer candle on a downtrend, it's bullish. If we see it on an uptrend, it's actually bearish, or can be bearish, of course. Okay. Get rid of this here. Go on to our next one. Next one we're going to take a look at is bullish engulfing. This is a bull. This is a bullish pattern. Obviously, you can tell by the name itself. So what we're looking for here on a bullish engulfing, it's a two candle pattern. Okay. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a red candle that is followed by a green candle that fully engulfs the entire previous red candle. As you can see. This particular candle did that, right? I do like them better when the green candle fully engulfs the red candle with the body, but wicks do count. But it is a little bit more bullish when the entire body actually en engulfs the previous uh, red candle. Okay, so even though the price uh, started around the same as a previous candle, right, the uh, price continued on, on an uptrend uh, beyond that. And what I like about this as well is let's say that we're looking at a daily chart here, right? So this, is, this was an entire day, this was an entire day. So what happened right here at this level? Well, what happened right there at that level is all new shorts on that day are now red, every single one of them, right? Any new shorts that entered yesterday are now red when we get above this level. So not only do you have buyers coming in because we're on a nice green day after a downtrend, but you also have some shorts that will need to cover their positions, creating more, more shares being bought. I really like the, the bullish engulfing candle. It's one of my favorite ones. But once again, you don't just look for it on the daily chart. You can look for it on any chart, chart uh, time frame that, that you may be looking at. Okay, let's look at, its, uh, at the bullish engulfing candle's nemesis here which is going to be, of course, I can get my thing to work here. It's going to be the bearish engulfing candle, right? So this is exactly the opposite of a bullish engulfing candle. You have a bearish engulfing candle here. So basically what's happening with a bearish engulfing candle, again, a two candle pattern, is it's opposite of bullish engulfing where the current red candle completely engulfs the previous green candle. Again, the body did not completely engulf, but the wicks did. 
I like them better when the body engulfs. So basically, if we had the body that came up here, I would like it better, right? If this was all red here, I would like it better. But it still classifies as a bearish engulfing, even though uh, part of it was done with the top wick. Okay, so <clears throat> the basically this red candle, you want to make sure that it also goes, you know, well below the previous green candle. Again, better if it's body and not just wick, but either one, either one works. Uh, what I definitely like to see is I like to see that the red candle closes at least below the previous open of the green candle uh, prior to it. So why is this a bearish, uh, bearish pattern? Well, it's a bearish pattern because it shows that buyers at this point, after this uptrend, they're starting to lose control here, right? You know, we saw that uh, price action got pushed up to here, it got rejected, and then we had a nice uh, big fat red candle uh, afterwards. So sellers are now uh, gaining control over buyers. So we could possibly see a reversal. So that's the opposite of your bearish engulfing. Okay, three white soldiers. Take a look at this one here real quick. So three white soldiers, basically what it is, I like to call it three green soldiers. I think three white soldiers, they called it that because uh, people were using like black and white candles back way when, but call it whatever you want to. Uh, it makes more sense to me to call it three green soldiers because you know, I'm looking at green candles versus red candles. So basically what these are, it's a three candle pattern and you want to look for three big candles in a row here. We got one, two, three, right there. And what we're looking for is we're looking for each of these candles to close higher than the previous candle. We're looking for this to happen on a downtrend. So we see this downtrend here. And now we see one, two, three nice big long green candles. <clears throat> we want to see these candles with, with little to no wicks, right? If we see a little bit of wicks, that's okay. If we see a little bit more wicks on the downside, that's okay. But for the most part, we don't want to see too many wicks on this particular uh, candle formation. Okay, so why is this particular candle formation bullish? Well, it's pretty obvious, right? After this nasty downtrend that we had here, we had three consecutive candles. So, so let's say that this, we're looking at a daily chart here, right? So three consecutive days after a nasty downtrend, we saw that buyers are really in control. There's not a lot of selling going on. We don't have a lot of, lot of top wicks here, right? Pretty small top wicks. And this particular candle has a zero top wick. So buyers are definitely back in control, okay? Now, whether this is on a daily chart, five minute chart, 15 minute chart, again, it doesn't matter. It just shows you that buyers are definitely back in control after this particular type of, uh, of setup is, is identified. Okay, let's look at the next one here. So basically, this one is the opposite of the three white soldiers. This is the three black crows, okay? So basically, what we're looking at here is, is this is a bearish pattern, obviously, another three candle pattern. Same exact thing. You're instead of on a downtrend, this is on an uptrend. And what we see here is buyers losing control, sellers coming in very heavy on three consecutive candles. Again, if this were a daily chart, this would be three consecutive days that sellers were back in control. So we definitely could be looking for a possible reversal, trend reversal here with this type of, of pattern. And why is it bearish? I think it's pretty obvious. It obviously indicates the start of a, of a downtrend with sellers being in pretty much complete control over the past three candles, which is pretty in indicative of that right here. Okay, next one that we're gonna take a look at I think we have two more, maybe, yeah, I think two more, is we're going to take a look at Morningstar. Okay, Morningstar is a bullish pattern. It is another three candle pattern. And this is where I talked about earlier when we first started uh, our session here, I talked about uh, dojis, right? Even though a doji by itself is a neutral candle, 
when it's coupled with other candles, it can actually point to point towards bullish or point towards bearish. So in this particular situation, this is a bullish pattern. So what's happening here, right? So we have a downtrend, right? We had a little bit of uh, buyers coming back in here and immediately got just got sold off hard right after that candle. Really nasty downtrend going on. So what happened here? This is our, our candle that we're, we're going to start paying attention to, right? And why do we pay attention to, to this particular candle? We pay attention to it because it's where things are slowing down, right? So we have nasty red candle, nasty red candle, nasty candle, nasty candle. Then we have a really nasty red candle. Then what happened here? Well, sellers are actually slowing down. Selling is slowing down. We even saw some buyers come in here off of the bottom to bring this back up. So with sellers slowing down and buyers coming in, what could that possibly signal, right? Well, that could possibly signal that we could see a, a reversal here. And what we're looking for with confirmation on this particular pattern is you're looking for that third candle of the pattern to be a nice big green candle, right? So what we're looking for is, we're looking for these really in a really hard downtrend. And we're looking for a smaller bodied candle, which is this one here, to be in between a previous big red candle, right? Followed by a nice big green candle, okay? A stronger indication of the possible reversal if this particular green candle closes, it didn't here, but if it closes above that previous red candle, let's say it, you know that it closed up here, this green candle went actually all the way up here and closed up here. If it does that, if it closes above that previous red candle, it's actually a stronger indication that a reversal is likely uh, going to take place. Obviously nothing ever guaranteed, but uh, you can look for stronger indications, of course. So why is this a, a bullish candle? Or I'm sorry, a bullish uh, candle pattern? Well, it's bullish because it shows that down here, selling pressure slowed down, right? So not only did selling pressure slow, slow down, but we also saw some buyers coming in, okay? And then on the next candle, well, there's our confirmation that buyers are, are, are back in business. And so it's bullish because Sellers slowed down, buyers came in, and now we have a confirmation candle that a lot of buyers thought that that was a really good place to uh, pick up some shares on that particular uh, stock. Okay, let's look at the opposite of the morning star. And of course, it's called the evening star, right? Okay, so the evening star. This is exactly the opposite type of pattern that we were just looking at on the morning star. So now we're on an uptrend instead of a downtrend, right? So we had buy, buy, buy coming in. We had some sellers come in, try and sell it back down. Didn't work. Uh, got bought back up. Got bought back up again. But look what happened here. Again, just like on our downtrend on the morning star where we had sellers slowing down, well, here on the evening star, we have buyers slowing down. So demand is, is drying up, right? And so with demand drying up, Sellers came in here, pushed the price down a little bit. So what could happen? After this particular candle, we could start seeing some more sellers entering in this particular stock, thinking that this is a good place to enter a short position or it's a good place to take your profit or you know whatever else may be happening up there. So why is an evening star uh, bearish? Well, it's bearish because what I just said, basically uh, demand is drying up and sellers and shorts are coming into the market. So we can certainly uh, expect to possibly see a reversal in trend here. And again, what we're looking for here is we're looking for a small bodied candle, right? That is uh, following a big green candle and then preceded by, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, uh, <clears throat> preceded by a big green candle and followed by a big red candle. And that basically gives us our confirmation as to what's going on there. So that's all I have for today, guys. I hope that uh, this session was helpful. We are going to go over uh, a lot more of these uh, candle patterns. There's a ton of them. And I just I can't fit them all in, in one session. So we'll end up going over uh, some more in some uh, later sessions. And I'll just name it. You know, candle formations part two or whatever, so you guys can pick up on it. I'll put it in a playlist on YouTube so y'all can watch them consecutively if you like to do that. But uh, I really appreciate 
everybody uh, attending the session and uh, have a great uh, three-day weekend this weekend. we got Martin Luther King uh, Junior Day on Monday. The market's closed. So hope everybody enjoys their three-day weekend. And uh, as always, happy trading, and we'll see you on the next vid.